Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be demonstrating a feature in Simple GIS that allows you to take data out of an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file or other table that has associated zip code information and actually map that to zip code boundaries in your map. And so if you've used Simple GIS before, you may be familiar with the geocoding functions that allows you to take address data, uh, essentially street address data, and map that data as points onto your map. And this function is similar to that, except that it will actually take zip code, or you can use county boundaries, or state boundaries for that matter, and map your data to those boundaries in your map. So let's just get started, uh, and maybe this will become clearer. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I created a very simple spreadsheet here. It just has two columns actually. I have one column called zip code which has the zip code information in it and a second column called customers which I'm just assuming for the purpose of this demonstration this would represent the number of customers within each zip code. And of course I could have multiple columns in this table as well as additional rows um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, this should suffice. So you can see it's a very basic spreadsheet, and I'm going to minimize this for now. And if you've used Simple GIS before, of course, when you first launch the application, you'll come to this initial screen. Uh, with, this is where you would create a new project file at. And this allows you to create a new project from scratch, and you can use one of these predefined project templates um, to go ahead and have some uh, basic base map data loaded into your project. But of course, if you had already created a project and saved that project, you could also go to the Open Project menu here on the left and click on that, navigate to your project, and open your project from there. Um, but for the purposes of today's demonstration, I'm just going to create a new project from scratch. And since I don't uh, have to worry about needing to use the base map data offline. I'm just going to use one of these project templates based off of the freely available tile mapping services um, out there that's available to you. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use the Stamen Terrain tile mapping service. And so I'm going to select this template just by double clicking on its tile. And this will actually create a new project and go ahead and load in just this single layer as my base map, which is the Stamen Terrain uh, Tile Mapping Service. And so at this point, I can use my zoom tool and I'll just zoom in around my area of interest. So I'll zoom in around the US. Since uh, Simple GIS, as far as zip code boundaries and a lot of its geocoding functions, is strictly US based. So in this case, um, I've zoomed in around the U.S., uh, continental U.S., and I'm going to now uh, map my Excel data by zip code to boundaries onto my map. And so the way I do that, if you look along the top row of buttons, to the far right, it's actually the third button from the right, um, and it's right next to the street address search bar, um, there is a... Uh, a tool button and this is the normal tool button you would normally use if you were wanting to take street address data from say an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file or another table and map that street address um, as point features on your map. But if you notice next to this tool button there's a drop down arrow and if you click on this arrow you'll see the menu expand and in for today's demonstration, what I want to look at is the very last menu option in this drop-down, and it's called Map Data to Boundaries. And this is the menu option that will actually allow you to map zip codes or county boundaries or state boundaries, uh, map that data out of your spreadsheet or CSV file to the boundaries on the map. So as I click on this menu, I get this dialog box that comes up. And the first thing I need to notice at the top is, is I need to select my Excel, CSV, or other table source that contains the data I'm wanting to, to map. And so to do that, I simply click on this button that has the yellow database with the magnifying glass over it. As I click on this tool button, I'll get a dialog box asking me to select the source of my table data. 
And since I am going to be looking for a file base um, data table, since really all I'm going to be pointing to is an Excel spreadsheet, I stay on this first tab. And here underneath the file name in this edit box, I'm going to click on the button next to the edit box that has the open folder icon. And this will bring up a file selection dialog box. At this point, I can navigate to the folder that contains my spreadsheet. Uh, in this case, I'm already in the folder that has my spreadsheet data, which is just simply called mycustomers.xlsx. Uh, and so I can double click on this file. And when I do that, the file selection dialog box disappears. And now I see that the file name has been populated here in my edit box. So now I can simply click apply. And now it's asking me to confirm whether the first row of data in my spreadsheet contains the field names. And if I was to bring up my spreadsheet once more and just look at it, I can see that in fact, my first row of data has the column headings or field names for the data. So I have one called zip code and one called customers. So I'll minimize this back down. And so I'm just going to confirm that yes, the first row does contain field names. At this point in time, I've noticed that it's populated all of the available columns out of my spreadsheet under the available fields at this point. And I also need to make sure that I have a set of radio buttons up towards the top here. And I need to select the type of boundary that I'm wanting to map the data to. And so in this case, I am dealing with zip code. So I'm already selected on this radio button zip code. So I'll leave that selected. But if I had county name and state name, for instance, in my data, I can map to the county. Or if I had a state name or state abbreviation, I can map to the state boundary. At this point in time, I just need to tell Simple GIS, since I am mapping to zip code, which column or field in my spreadsheet actually contains the zip code information. And in this case, it's pretty easy to see. I already have a column named zip code. And so I'm going to specify that as the column containing my zip code data by selecting it under the available fields by clicking on it. And then I'm going to click on this button here that has the double arrows pointing to the right to move this field into my zip code field here. And so this is just uh, confirming with Simple GIS that this is the column or field in my spreadsheet that has the zip code information. Next, I need to specify an output. Um, since Simple GIS will take this information and create a new shape file layer that will add to my map. And so to do that, I click on this button with the open folder again. And again, I come to a new file selection dialog box. And at this point, I can navigate to a folder where I want to save this layer at. And I'm already at the folder. I'm going to keep this particular shape file in. So now I just need to give it a file name for my new shape file layer. So in this case, I'm just simply going to type in my customers by zip, but you could call it whatever you want to, and click save. And when I do that, I see that it populates this file name here for my new shape file that it's going to create. I can also specify the type of legend I want for this new layer that it's going to add to my map. If I just want to use the same symbol for every feature in my layer, I leave it set on simple. Or I could create a unique uh, classification legend that would create a unique symbol based upon some value in a field that I designate. Or I could create a gradient legend that will uh, create a color gradient for each symbol based upon the value in some field. And so that's what I'm going to select in this case. And then if I wanted to choose what to use as my base symbol, I could just simply click on this select base symbol button to bring up the symbol palette. I could choose um, different symbols if I wanted to that will use as my base, which is just the, the pattern in the background. So I'm going to leave it set at a solid pattern. And so I'm going to leave it set on the default symbol it had set. And now I'm going to select the field that it's going to use for the classification, which in my case, I'm going to select customers. And so it's going to create a color based uh, gradient based upon the number of customers in each zip code. And now all I have to do at this point is simply click execute. 
It'll begin processing the records. And then when it's done, it'll add the new layer to your map. If you see here in my table of contents on the left-hand side, I have this new layer. And I can see kind of here uh, in the middle of the screen where it added those boundaries at. And I'm just going to zoom in for a closer look using my zoom tool to click and drag a rectangle around this area. And now I see that it has in fact mapped those zip code boundaries to the map. I can use the view feature data tool while I have my zip code layers, my active layer, to click on these to view the data in each of those boundaries. So in this case, I see that it has a zip code and the number of customers for that zip code that it pulled out of my spreadsheet. And so with that, I see how I have mapped that data to the zip code boundaries on my map. So hopefully this has been useful. Um, again, just another way um, to take your data out of uh, your different file formats and really uh, put them on a map for a uh, so that you can be able to visualize and analyze your data in new and meaningful ways. Um, if you have any uh, questions or would like to see other information, please visit our website. You can visit that website at simplegissoftware.com. Thank you.